Jerusalem was destroyed in Nebuchadnezzar's 18th regnal year. For Jerusalem to have been destroyed in 607 BC, this would mean moving back not just the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, but the reign of his father Nebuchadnezzar, and that of the rulers that preceded him, some 20 years. This would open up a gap of 20 years in the Neo-Babylonian chronology for all kings after Nebuchadnezzar. Either these kings would have had to reign longer than what history has revealed, or there would have been other kings unknown to history, or both. However, as we've discovered, we can derive absolute dates from astronomical observations made during the reigns of these kings. These synchronize the year, month, and day of the reigning monarch to observations of the sun, moon, and planets that identify a specific date in history. These astronomical tablets form a fingerprint from the ancient sky that is unmistakable. By looking at dozens of observations on VAT 4956, we can pinpoint Nebuchadnezzar's 37th regnal year to 568 BC, making his 18th year, when Jerusalem was destroyed, 587 BC. This tablet does not allow us to move Nebuchadnezzar's reign back 20 years. But we do not have to rely on VAT 4956 alone. There are other astronomical tablets that help us establish absolute dates for the Neo-Babylonian dynasty, which in turn is the only way to synchronize the relative dating of events in Bible chronology with the historical timeline. For instance, the chronology of Nebuchadnezzar's reign is further established when we examine tablets that record lunar eclipses. LBAT 1420 reports lunar eclipses in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. It contains not only predictions that ancient astronomers made beforehand, but also detailed observations of lunar eclipses. While VAT 4956 contains dozens of observations that pertain to one year, year 37, LBAT 420 contains dozens of lunar eclipses that span from Nebuchadnezzar's first year all the way up to his 29th year. This list of lunar eclipses yield three dozen absolute dates that cannot belong to any other period of history. It does not allow Nebuchadnezzar's reign to budge an inch, much less 20 years. It only confirms the conclusion that we've already confirmed from VAT 4956 that Nebuchadnezzar's first year was 604 BC, making his 18th year 587 BC. But there's more. LBAT 1421 lists two lunar eclipses in month 6 and month 12 for year 42 of Nebuchadnezzar. These eclipses yield two absolute dates, tying year 42 to 563 BC. LBAT 1419 lists two eclipses for year 14 and year 32 of Nebuchadnezzar. Year 14 matches up to be 591 BC and year 32, 573 BC. Again, this forms a picture of Nebuchadnezzar's reign that harmonizes perfectly with VAT 4956 and the previously discussed lunar eclipse tablets. A consistent picture emerges. Between these four tablets, we can find absolute dates for over half of Nebuchadnezzar's 43 years of rule. There is even an observation tied to his 18th year, once again confirming that it is indeed 587 BC. Nebuchadnezzar's reign is so fixed by absolute dates from the astronomical record that we cannot move back his reign a year, much less 20 years. And even if we could move back his reign 20 years, this would have repercussions on the rulers that preceded him, moving back their reigns 20 years. However, there are other astronomical tablets that give absolute dates that fix the reigns of these rulers as well. The chronology of these kings cannot budge from the established timeline. We have not covered each and every astronomical tablet that references this time period, but what has been discussed should be more than enough to initiate your own research on the matter. Again and again, the astronomical tablets tell the same story, harmonizing together in a coherent chronology that is totally reliable. These observations give us fingerprint evidence, as it were. 
In conclusion, we can truly say that the sky does not lie.